Normally when I post a video, it's because I've passed some new milestone in developing functionality on my computer. This video is going to be different though, um, because while I have been making some progress, it's not yet completed. So this is more of a, a snapshot of something that's in progress and hopefully there'll be another video later that shows when it's finally working. What I'm working on, of course, is finally the video board that I've mentioned a couple of times. And this is it um, in its current prototype state here on this breadboard. Um, it's built around this chip here. This is the TMS9918A. That's a video display processor that was made by Texas Instruments and introduced in 1979. Um, and it powered a number of 1980s uh, microcomputers, including TI's own computer, the 994A, um, and the MSX series of computers from Japan. So it has a text mode of uh, 40 by 24 characters um, and a maximum graphics resolution of 256 by 192. So, and it sports 16 colors and can manage uh, 32 sprites with collision detection. So it's quite a capable chip for its time. Um, although unfortunately it doesn't have any hardware support for scrolling. It directly generates um, a composite NTSC signal um, right there on the chip and it also has its own, manages its own video memory. So it doesn't uh, take any of the processor's memory to, uh, to, to make that work. So the downside though is that it is designed to use dynamic memory. Um, dynamic memory is a pain to work with. It requires a 12 volt rail um, and uh, it needs to be continually refreshed. And it's got much less of a storage density than modern static RAMs. So I'm using um, a circuit, uh, you know, got it here from um, a guy called Tom Demence online. Um, a number, it's a circuit that a number of people have used which adapts uh, static RAM so that it can work with this chip. So most of what's going on on this board here is that adaptation. So there's a couple of um, octal latches here that sort of latch the, um, the, the memory data and the row and column signals in order to turn them into addresses for the static RAM here. This is a 32K um, static RAM. I'm actually only using, only need to use 16K of it. Um, and there's a, there's a, um, uh, an octal inverter over here for um, for just just doing some other logic. So the idea is that this whole this thing as a whole um, can sort of you know produce the video signal, just sort of the and storing um, all the video data directly in um, in this uh, in this static RAM chip. Now I've got room on my board so that I'll when I finally um, have this finalized, I'll be able to tie it directly into the chips. Uh, data bus and that means you know it'll be memory mapped which is how the 6502 likes to handle all its peripherals but for the moment I'm not doing that instead what I'm doing is I'm controlling it from the 6522 here so I'm doing it through the through the board's user port you might remember this computer has two 6522s um, this one is the system port and that's for uh, that runs the the compact flash or the the, the SD card over here um, and this one is a, is a user port instead. So, so what we've got going on through here are, um, these are eight data, the eight data lines for the video processor, which are coming off port B of um, the, the 6522 here. Um, and up here we have four, um, four control lines. And so those are basically a reset line um, a, a read enable line, a write enable line, and a register select. Um, and so uh, those are those are doing what will eventually be done by directly by the uh, by the by the data bus. Um, so I've been writing code in fourth to uh, to pro um, manage this, um, setting the signals on there so that I can get the the video board up and running. So if I plug it into this tiny little monitor I've got here, you can see the um, AV1 popping up in the screen. And that is at least a good sign. That means that it's actually generating something that the monitor can recognize as a, as a composite NTSC signal. So, um, so that's good. However, lots of other things are not working. Um, one is that when I write 
RAM, uh, write to the RAM and the video RAM and read the data back, I do not get back what I wrote in. So that seems like a pretty big problem. And I don't know if that means that the I've um, made a mistake with the um, static RAM circuit or if my signaling is wrong. Um, so I just um, yesterday got this um, tiny little uh, USB logic analyzer and I'm hoping I'll be able to use that to, uh, to debug things. It'll be a little easier than using the oscilloscope to do it, which is what I've been doing up until now. Um, and so hopefully that'll, I'll be able to figure that out. The other thing is that the video signal I'm getting, although it does appear to be valid as MTSC and the monitors recognize it, isn't what I would expect to see. I'd expect to see a lot of nonsense on the screen, of course, but I would expect at least to be able to see front porch, back porch, um, the, you know, a border, other kinds of things that the, that the circuit should be putting out. Um, there's a bunch of things I know that I probably need to do, um, so I've got a variety of ideas about how I can fix that, um, because I, I suspect that the video output circuitry here isn't quite right. Um, and so I'm um, using a couple of different example circuits from, from other people's projects to try to figure that out. So hopefully um, soon I will have some real video to show. Um, I don't have that yet, but I'm uh, having fun figuring it out.